Hey, my name is Milan and in this video I'll show you how you can migrate a .NET application that is using Docker Compose for container orchestration to use .NET Aspire. And as a bonus for moving to .NET Aspire, we're also going to get resilience, observability and all of the other good stuff that we need to build cloud-ready distributed applications. So let me walk you through the current state in the content platform application. It's using Docker Compose to orchestrate the many containers and services that are needed to run this system. And we have two APIs, the Content Platform API and the Content Platform Reporting API. These are the two projects here. Now, we also have a Blazor WebAssembly application, which is this project here. And of course, we need a database. So we are running Postgres inside of a container and our two backend services are communicating with mass transit over RabbitMQ. So we are also running RabbitMQ and the management instance, which gives us a management UI as another Docker container in our Docker Compose setup. If I were to open up Docker Desktop, I would be able to see all of my container instances. So here is the presentation, the database, the reporting API and the regular API and the RabbitMQ container. You can also see what are the images that we are running. For the presentation container, I had to manually build the container image and run it inside of my Docker Compose setup, which you can see here, because I simply wasn't able to get this running the standard way like the other two API projects. And the reason for this is probably some port mapping that I got wrong, but essentially what I'm doing here is building the Blazor WebAssembly application using the SDK, and then I'm using Nginx as a reverse proxy to serve my static content because this is just a WebAssembly application. And I'm exposing this on the port of 80, which I'm mapping here to my public port of 3000. So this is how I'm able to patch this together and have my two APIs and my UI running in Docker Compose. So let me start this and show you how this works. If I open up localhost 3000, this is going to be my Blazor WebAssembly application where I can create some articles that can have any number of tags. So let's create an article. This is going to send a post request to my API and then it's going to call the get endpoint to list all of my articles. So let me create a few more. Let's create another article. The content doesn't really matter. And you can see that I'm able to communicate with my two backend services. Now these services are also going to be sending information between each other. So I can call the list endpoint here. Let's grab this article, for example. And when we created this article, we also published a message over RabbitMQ that was consumed by our other service, which is going to store a local copy of that article and use that to implement some additional logic. So you can see that I can fetch the article from both of my API instances. So this is all working nice and fine using my Docker Compose setup with the help of Nginx for serving our WebAssembly application. Now let's see what it would take to migrate this entire project to use .NET Aspire instead of Docker Compose. The simplest way to introduce .NET Aspire is to right click on one of your projects. I'm going to choose the Content Platform API and then click .NET Aspire Orchestrator Support. So this is going to generate some templates and we're going to get two new projects inside of Visual Studio. These are going to be the Content Platform App Host which is the actual application that we start and is responsible for orchestrating the services that we need. And we will also get the content platform service defaults project, which is going to configure things like telemetry, resilience, service discovery, and so on. So let's go ahead and scaffold this. And let me walk you through what we get out of the box. So you can see that I now have two new projects inside of my solution, and I'm going to put them inside of a solution folder called Aspire so that they're easier to distinguish. So let's move them over there. And then let's start from the app host project. Now, by default, we only have one project here, which is the project that I scaffolded. This is my content platform API. So you can see that we have a command to add this project. There are some source generation going on behind the scenes to generate this project. And then I can add it with a specific name. And this is how I will be able to reference this project using the service discovery capabilities of .NET Aspire. Now, what's also interesting is that we are creating a distributed application and the builder is actually an iDistributed application builder instance. So this is kind of similar to the web application builder that we have here. And you will see that we are following some similar ideas to configure our Aspire project. The second project that we got was the service defaults project. And this contains some sensible default values that you want your cloud ready applications to have. 
things like telemetry, health check, service discovery, service discovery for the HTTP clients. And we can go through this entire file where we are configuring logging and traces and metrics. These are all exported using OpenTelemetry. We also have some instrumentation packages installed that take care of so many things for us out of the box. By default, we're going to use an OpenTelemetry exporter to export all of the telemetry data that our application will generate. And what's also interesting is that Aspire is going to spin up an Aspire dashboard where you can track the resources that you have, the structured logs. You can even go into an individual application and observe the logs from that application. We will also check out how traces work and all of the other good stuff. Now we also have some health checks here and we are mapping some default endpoints. These are the health endpoint and the alive endpoint. Another thing that Aspire did behind the scenes was call these methods from my API project. So now you can see a call to builder add service defaults. And if I press F12 and go into the definition, this is actually going to be the extension method in my service defaults project. Now, another thing that happened was adding a call to map default endpoints, which is going to expose the health check endpoint and the alive endpoint on my API. Now I can do the same for my other API instance, the reporting API. I can say add and then click .NET Aspire Orchestrator Support. And if I go into my Aspire project, my second project is now going to show up. If I open up the program file here, you will also see a call to add service defaults and mapping the default endpoints. So this is how you can easily scaffold .NET Aspire from Visual Studio. But this only takes care of actually running our two APIs. What about the external services that we have, like the Postgres database or the RabbitMQ instance? The cool thing with Aspire is that you can also run these services inside of a Docker container. So you will need to use Docker either way, only this time Aspire will take care of the orchestration part. And how we can achieve this is through installing some NuGet packages. So what I can do is right click on my app host project and I can say add. And there's a nice extension here called .NET Aspire package. And essentially what this is going to do is just filter out the Aspire packages from NuGet. And these are just some of the packages that you can install. And as you can see, there's an Aspire package for Postgres. So I'm going to install the latest version. Now I'm also going to install the RabbitMQ package because I need to run my message broker. So with these two packages installed, I can go back to my app host file and I can start configuring my database and my message broker. And this follows a similar format to how I'm configuring my two APIs. I can say builder, add Postgres, and this is added by the NuGet package that I just installed. And now I need to assign a name to my database service. I'm going to call it content platform database. Now, if you chain another method call, there are a bunch of extension methods that you can explore here and you can do some interesting things. Among other things, you can even specify a concrete Docker image that you want to be running if you don't want to use the default one that is configured with this NuGet package. What I'm going to do is to configure a data volume, which is going to allow me to persist my database between application starts. And another thing that you can do is expose a user interface with the PG admin application that's going to allow you to manage your database instance through a web user interface. What's also interesting is that I can capture my database, let's call it Postgres, into a variable, and then I can add a reference to my two projects for this database. So I can say with reference, and I can specify Postgres. Let me also do the same for the reporting API. I will say with reference and let's specify Postgres. And behind the scenes, Aspire will connect my two API applications with this database instance. Now, this essentially boils down to configuring a connection string that we can use from our two APIs. And I'm going to show you what that will look like. But let's also configure our RabbitMQ instance using Aspire. So I can say builder add RabbitMQ and I'm going to call it content platform MQ. And you can also configure some additional things here. What I want to do is call the with management plugin method. And this is going to expose the management UI for RabbitMQ. And then I'm also going to add a reference to the RabbitMQ resource by calling with reference and specifying my variable that contains the RabbitMQ resource builder. Now, when it comes to the WebAssembly application, you might run into the issue that I'm seeing here. When I try to add .NET Aspire Orchestrator support, I get a message like this saying that the .NET Aspire Orchestrator project is already up to date and it simply won't add a reference to my WebAssembly project. So how you can get around this is by taking your project and just adding a respective project reference. Now inside of Visual Studio, and this is also something I discovered recently, is you can actually drag around your projects and drop them on each other to add a project reference. 
and this is going to add a project reference from the app host project to the content platform presentation project. And this is going to cause the source generators to kick in behind the scenes. And then I can say builder add project. And if I click projects, you will see that I can choose the content platform presentation project. So let's say content platform and I will append presentation. And this will allow me to run my Blazor WebAssembly application together with my two APIs and my database and my RabbitMQ instance. However, because Blazor WebAssembly is just a static website, there is no support for service discovery. So I will still have to specify a reference to my downstream API with the actual address where it's going to be exposed. Now this address is picked up by Aspire and you can configure it from the launch settings in our two API projects. And I set it to localhost 5000 and localhost 5001 for HTTPS. So this is what Aspire is going to use. If you are running a Blazor server application, then you can use service discovery here. And I would be able to use the name of my backend service. So this is the name and use service discovery to specify my route like this without the port. And then Aspire is able to resolve this at runtime and call the correct URL. And we are almost ready to start our application. Now, one more thing I want to do, and this is actually something that I recommend, is that you customize the Aspire service defaults with the values that you need. Now, one thing I want to do is to add another source to my tracing setup by calling add source. And I'm going to specify mass transit here. And this is going to pick up from the traces that are generated by mass transit. Now, what happens with our connection strings? You can see here that I'm using my database and RabbitMQ connection string to connect to my respective Docker container instances. And these connection strings are specified in my app settings development JSON. And the cool thing with Aspire is that you no longer have to do this. You can use the service name here as the name of the connection string. So I can update my two API projects to use the content platform DB when connecting to the Postgres instance and the content platform MQ, which is the name of my RabbitMQ resource with Aspire. So this is how I can specify my connection strings. Let me also do that in the other project. So here I'll specify database and here I'm going to specify the RabbitMQ connection string. And behind the scenes, Aspire is going to wire up everything that's needed. And when my two applications start, hopefully everything should work just fine. Now, this is just your typical mass transit setup. I'm using the connection string to specify the host, which contains the RabbitMQ URI along with the username and password. And then for my database, I'm just configuring EF core using MPG SQL. So let's try to start the application and let's see what's going to happen. After a few moments, you should see the Aspire dashboard starting up where you can see the resources that we have configured. And here we have our reporting API and the content platform API, as well as our Blazor WebAssembly user interface. And we also have our RabbitMQ container, the database container, which is running Postgres and the Postgres PG admin. You can also go into the logs for the individual services. Now let's check out the PG admin, for example. I can click on this endpoint here and I will be taken to the PG admin user interface where I can open up the servers and examine the two databases that I have. And here I have two schemas, content and reporting, which contain my actual database tables. Let's say I want to close this down. The next thing that you can check out is the management UI for the RabbitMQ instance. You can see I'm already authenticated, but let's say I log out. How would I know what username and password I want to use? You can go into the actual resource. Let's say I click here on content platform MQ. And then if I navigate down, I can see the environment variables that Aspire is configuring. And here you can see the username and password that are assigned to the container when Aspire starts it up. So now I can say guest and I can paste in the password. And if I click login, I will be able to see the RabbitMQ management UI. And here I can take a look at the exchanges that are configured by Mass Transit automatically. So you can see that our connection from Mass Transit is working. So let's close this down. Now let's take a look at some other things. For example, you can see the structured logs from your two applications. Based on the resource name, you can figure out where the logs are coming from. You can also take a look at the traces. Right now, there is only one trace from the Blazor WebAssembly application that is requesting the list of articles. So let's go back to the resources and I can click on the Blazor WebAssembly endpoint, which is going to open up the user interface. And by default, the articles are going to load. Let's say I want to delete an article and I want to create another article here with some random data, doesn't matter. 
let's say I want to delete another article. So we deleted two articles and we created one. So now if I go back to the traces, you will be able to see the traces that I generated with these operations. So here is the delete request. If I take a look at this trace, I can see I sent a delete request to my API which completed, but it also published a message to RabbitMQ and this was the article deleted event. The reporting API is subscribed to this event and is going to receive it and process it, which you can see from these two spans here. Now, all of this is made available through the mass transit integration with OpenTelemetry. And I think it's pretty cool that you get all of this out of the box by just setting up your services with .NET Aspire. And you can see that in general, the migration from Docker Compose to .NET Aspire wasn't all that complicated. We just needed to set up the services that we want to use, which were the database, the RabbitMQ instance, and then connect them to our two API projects. Another thing that you get is also being able to view the application metrics. So I can take a look at the active requests, the request duration, for example, on my content platform API. And you can see all of the other metrics that are configured by default when you set up an Aspire project. So after everything is said and done, we managed to replace the YAML that we have in the Docker Compose file, which you can see here, with this code inside of our Aspire app host project, which allows us to configure these same resources and connect them to our applications. The advantage of using Aspire is that it simplified how you connect to these services because you can reference the database and the message broker and Aspire takes care of starting up these resources and also configuring the respective connection strings. And this is something I really like with Aspire. I also like the built-in monitoring dashboard and the open telemetry configuration. Now we weren't able to showcase service discovery all too much, but it also functions excellent with Aspire. If you enjoy enjoyed this video about migrating from Docker Compose orchestration to .NET Aspire, then make sure to smash the like button. If you want to learn more about the .NET Aspire basics, then I suggest that you watch this video next. Check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.